Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, officials released the autopsy on Amanda Stevenson, the 20-year-old woman who went missing last November. At a major runoff election took place last night, we have the results from some of the most watched races. Plus, deadly storms continue to hit the state, leaving thousands without power potentially for days. And we still have a chance for maybe a couple of ice with thunder showers coming our way for the next few days. We'll take a look at that. The weather coming up. As Shiner softball tries to get back to state, Wild does not begin to describe the ending to their state semifinal game. The highlights coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the 29th day of May 2024. The time is now 630 on our on our Wednesday morning. I almost said Friday. Uh, <laughs> is it Friday yet? Wishful thinking. Uh -huh, there you go. And it is National Flip Flop Day. Flip Flop Day. Do you wear flip flops? Uh, only in the summertime. Only in the summertime. And it's definitely starting to feel like summertime, isn't it, Carolina? Yes. I'm going to have to get some fancy flip flops. Maybe i got to bedazzle them oh, to yeah. dress them up for some outfits because <laughs> it is very hot outside. I yes. don't want to wear socks. Yes, Carolina. In fact, even after all the rain and the rain cooled air swept through the area, it's still going to be hot today. Very unfortunate to say because it is really starting to feel like summer and I wouldn't. And in fact, folks, I'm already calling it. I'm going to say it's going to be the hottest summer on record, even hotter than last year's record breaking summer. And with a record hot summer, we could also have a bad hurricane season, but that's not going to come for a little bit because this morning, like I said, you may have noticed it is a little bit cooler out there this morning. You're looking live here in Eastern Victoria. I don't know why it says sunny. It is not sunny outside. 73 degrees right now, but your dew point four degrees off that temperature. Still a little bit humid, sitting at 87%. Right now, that's not enough for fog, but you will notice it is a little bit more humid out there this morning. And still, like I said, look at all of us in the low 70s, some of us in the mid 70s and also in the upper 70s along the immediate coast because you're right next to that warm 85 degree water. But looking at your radar, we did think there was going to be, I thought there was going to be a couple of thunder showers out there right about now, but all of the activity is over near Houston. It looks like that's actually dying down right now as we speak. But coming away today, I'm thinking maybe, maybe an ice would. I'm about a 30% chance. Uh, may actually maybe 20 to 30 percent chance for an ice hooded really weak thunder shower somewhere somewhere in the crosshairs today maybe one or two and there's also a chance not a single thing develops so i'm going to recommend maybe bring the umbrella just in case but even with the rain today and the clouds decreasing to partly cloudy skies i think it's going to be another warm day still right around 92 here in victoria out west y'all can see maybe mid to upper 90s for today but after all the rain has swept through the area it has cleared out all that nasty hazy air quality and we're left with just some moderate air quality for today, but we got lots more warm and pretty consistent temperatures for the rest of this week and also a couple more daily rain chances. We're going to take a look at all that more in just a few more moments. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Parker. Officials released the autopsy on Amanda Stevenson, the 20 year old woman who went missing last November. Stevenson's death has been ruled a homicide with the cause of death determined as blunt head trauma and possible drowning. A toxology report also tested positive for marijuana, alcohol and meth. Authorities connected and named 45 year old Kevin Bennettson as the suspect in Stevenson's death. In late November, police pulled Bennettson in an attempt to re-interview him, but when authorities went to question him, he took his own life with a handgun. A major runoff election in the crossroads took place last night. Here are the numbers. In the Texas House District 30 Republican runoff, A.J. Ladderback, who won five terms as Jackson County Sheriff, wins the runoff with 55% of the vote against former Victoria Mayor Jeff Bachknight. Ladderback plans to keep Texas in the district conservative. Rural values, Texan values are what's clearly important here. Preserving our culture and, uh, and, and keeping things, um, you know, really just keeping Texas, Texas in, in so many ways. Gearing up for the November election where he takes on Democrat Stephanie Bassam, who ran unopposed. In the runoff race for Victoria County Commissioner Precinct 3, Shannon Martin, a former firefighter for the Victoria Fire Department, won, won with 62% of the votes against local businessman Brad Tucker, who received 38% of the total vote. Martin promises to stand behind the issues and priorities voiced by his supporters. Voters and supporters of Precinct 3, thank you. Um, I promised you that I'd work hard 
to, to get here, and I did, and I couldn't get here without your support. And uh, I, I promise you, whatever your um, issues are, whatever your priorities are, those are going to be my priorities, and I'll, I'll stand behind that. Since 1930, just four commissioners have held the Precinct 3 seat. Martin says he is a problem solver who is committed and capable. Now in the race for Lavaca County Sheriff, incumbent Sheriff Micah Harmon and candidate Stephen Greenwell faced off last night. Here are the results. Greenwell won the runoff with 66% of the vote to incumbent Harmon's 34%. Now to Calhoun County's two runoff races. First, County Tech's assessor race, Azalea Bonus won the race with 63% of the votes against Tracy Johnson, who received 37%. And out of the runoff results for Calhoun County Precinct 5 Constable, Chelsea Holt takes the lead with 59% of the vote against David J. Thomas, who received 41% of the votes. And here's a look at the early voting turnout for the May 28th runoff election. Out of the total number of registered voters living in the district able to vote in the runoff, 13% showed up to the polls or sent in a mail-in ballot. That's 7,457 votes out of 56,784 registered voters. Former President Trump was back in, new, in a New York City courtroom Tuesday as his hush money trial nears its end. Both sides delivered their closing arguments Tuesday. Trump has pled not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records, charges related to alleged hush money payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels in the lead up to the 2016 election. The judge in the case expects jurors to receive their instructions Thursday, after which they will be able to begin their deliberations. We'll go to Washington for more. Now to the big story this morning, the weather and deadly storms. Power outages across the state could last for days. Terrifying new video of the deadly storms hitting Texas. At least seven people killed in recent days. More than a million power outages as a new storm system swept from Dallas to Houston. Some families could be in the dark for days. This historic church outside of Dallas set ablaze and destroyed in the storm. Oh my God! Torrential rain drenching Dallas drivers, intense winds ripping this plane from the gate at Dallas Fort Worth Airport. More than a thousand flights canceled nationwide. This year is now the busiest severe weather season in 13 years. In Kentucky, Devin Johnson and his family are combing through what's left of their home. It is the second time in three years a tornado has left them homeless. A twister in 2021 devastated the region. Hey, baby. Hi, that storm in 2021 led to this harrowing rescue. Two infants in a bathtub blown away by a tornado. Their grandmother lost her home again this past weekend. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Pope Francis apologized Tuesday after he was quoted using a vulgar term about gays to reaffirm the Catholic Church's ban on gay priests. Italian media on Monday had quoted unnamed Italian bishops in reporting that Francis jokingly used the term while speaking in Italian during the encounter. He had used the term in reaffirming the Vatican's ban on allowing gay men to enter seminaries and be ordained priests. A Vatican spokesperson said Francis is aware of the reports and recalled that the Argentine Pope, who has made outreach to LGBTQ plus Catholics a hallmark of his papacy, has long insisted there was room for everyone in the Catholic Church. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel Crossroads today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. The time is now just about 6.39 on our Wednesday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. Three area counties will get SNAP food benefits after recent storms. Terry Russell in Washington. Former President Trump's hush money trial will be in the hands of the jury today. That story coming up. And also coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your marine forecast, followed by your weather and health forecast. And later on sunrise, we'll take another look at the rain chances that are still possible for the rest of this week.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in Quero. And look at that, the sun's starting to slowly come up and he got a little bit of uh, a couple of clouds out there this morning. I'd say mostly cloudy out there. I don't know why it says sunny. It's not sunny out there. It's the second one's done that. 71 degrees out there. You may have noticed it's a little bit cooler after the rain cooled air swept through the area. Still a little bit humid though with your dew point one degrees off in that temperature. Got a 96% humidity. So that is enough for fog. So I'll let you know you might see a real, real thin layer of fog out there this morning, but it's going to be another warm, very warm day. I might, I might say getting up to about 92 today. Also plenty humid with maybe an isolated spotty uh, thunder shower somewhere, somewhere in the crossroads this afternoon, but very, very unlikely that you'll see it. But I might still recommend you take the umbrella. But if you're going to go fishing today, not too bad. Slightly choppy waves, one to two feet high, and your water temperature is still 87 degrees. And your high tide is late this afternoon, about 536. And not too bad in terms of grass pollen or tree pollen. Just pollen across the board, very nice today. Air quality is moderate and your very high UV index in the afternoon. But we've got lots of consistent temperatures for the rest of this week and a couple more rain chances as well. We're going to take a look at all that and more in just a few more moments. And that's it for weather. Now we're going to look at sports with Zach Brown. Shiner in the state semifinal game in Austin trying to get back to the state title game for the first time since 2016 in the third inning. Already up 1-0. Kaylee oh, Bedeker sends one to the deepest part of the park. It's at the wall, but it's off the top of the wall. Two runs do score. Shiner now leading 3-0 in the third, but Crawford responds with two of their own. Now check this out in the fifth. Shiner nursing a 3-2 lead. Liner caught it short on to first and inning ending double play, but Crawford staying in the ball game. Same score in the sixth. And a solo home run to left. The and the score is all knotted at three. Madness in the semifinal game. But it gets a whole lot crazier than that. Bottom of the seventh. Shiner with the bases loaded. Nobody out. But they chop it to third. So Crawford's going to come home with it. And on to first. And a double play in a perfect situation becomes disaster for Shiner. Or does it? The umpires called obstruction, so they're going to say the run scores because she was tripped coming home. So Shiner celebrating, Crawford absolutely livid. But while Shiner celebrates and Crawford sulks, the OIL Rules Committee comes on the field and overturns everything. Now Shiner coach Jason Keller livid because they say the game must go on. But with two outs and two on, Peyton Vincic at the plate and she shoots it up the middle. Brindley Ramirez scores and the Comanches walk off into the state championship game. They will get Beckville Wednesday night trying to win their first state title since 2016. What an ending in Austin and hey at 10 a.m. this morning Hallettsville trying to do the exact same thing and that's punched their ticket to a state title game. Good luck to the Lady Bramers as well with your 25 sports. Now I'm Zach Brown. Thank you, Zach. All right, we want to invite you all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. A jury will soon decide the fate of former President Donald Trump. Closing arguments from the prosecution and defense wrapped up yesterday. Now 12 New Yorkers will decide whether Trump falsified business records. Trump denies all wrongdoing. Today is day one of jury deliberation in the first ever criminal trial of a former American president. It's a, it's a very sad day. This is a dark day in America. We have a rigged court case that should have never been brought. In closing arguments yesterday, former President Trump's defense attorney Todd Blanche trying to tear down the credibility of the prosecution's star witness, Michael Cohen, Trump's former fixer. Blanche telling the jury, Cohen told you a number of things on that witness stand that were lies, pure and simple, saying Cohen came to the witness stand bent on revenge with an axe to grind. Trump is accused of falsifying business records to hide a payment he made to Cohen to pay off adult film actress Stormy Daniels to keep her quiet about a long denied affair. Prosecutors say Trump falsified documents to hide that information from voters. Trump denies all wrongdoing. Prosecutor Joshua Steinglass says Trump was at the center of a conspiracy and cover up. Steinglass calls Cohen a complicated witness, saying the defense goes on and on about Michael Cohen is immoral or a liar or a thief. We didn't choose Michael Cohen to be a witness. We didn't pick him up at a witness store. The defendant chose him as a fixer because he was willing to lie and cheat. Outside the courthouse, actor Robert De Niro clashing with the heckler. 
You're a bunch of clowns. When you see this guy get elected, De Niro dispatched by the Biden campaign, standing alongside police officers who were attacked at the Capitol on January 6th. Donald Trump wants to destroy not only the city, but the country, and eventually he could destroy the world. Trump's case is in the hands of five women and seven men. The judge will instruct them on the law first thing this morning, and then deliberations start. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code right there on your screen to take part. We ask you, do you think the jury will convict Trump? Okay, let's take a look. All right, this has changed a little bit since the last half hour. 26% of you say yes, and 74% of you say no. We want to keep hearing from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. Three area counties will get SNAP food benefits after recent storms. Governor Greg Abbott says recipients in Calhoun, Lavaca and Warren counties impacted by recent storms can buy hot foods and ready to eat meals with their benefits. Federal approval allows SNAP recipients to purchase hot foods with their Lone Star cards through June 30th. To apply, residents can dial 211 and select option 8. Benefits will be placed on their Lone Star cards within two business days once benefits are approved. The time is now now 647 on our Wednesday morning still to come tattoos could have an increase in a person's risk of developing lymphoma. Okay, it's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Dora. Happy birthday, Mama Dora from your family. We love you so much. Have an awesome day. Oh, happy birthday, Dora. And under the bridge star and defender of Elvis is Graceland Estate, Riley Keough. With a birthday today, she's 35. Happy birthday, Riley. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to CrossroadsToday.com. Click on more and under home you'll see KVU. Submit your birthday. That's right. Time is now 648 on your Wednesday morning. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>
Well, good morning, Crossroads. Well, the showers and thunderstorms, it looks like it all really missed most of us. In fact, looking at your radar this morning, I thought there'd be a couple thunderstorms out there. It looks like all the activity is out east towards Houston. Look at that. Very nice and dry out there this morning. Dry in terms of rain, it's still a little bit humid out there. But looking at yesterday's storms, you can see we did have one storm that went through Cuero, probably dropped between pea size and maybe uh, penny size hail. But the big stuff went through Houston, kind of just like that one storm that went through Houston, actually swept through Houston. I think it was like two weeks ago, but they got some pretty strong winds over there. And actually that storm system, that same one actually went through Dallas and millions are still without power in the DFW area. So if you have family up there, make sure that they are okay. But for today here in the crossroads, I think we might maybe see an isolated one or two, like I'm talking one or two isolated thunder showers out there this afternoon. But in terms of severe weather, I don't think there's gonna be any, I, even though the National Weather Service says a level one on five, I don't think any is coming away today or tomorrow, but our next best shot will be on Friday. But we're gonna take a look at all that more though in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. Having tattoos could increase a person's risk of developing lymphoma. Re Swedish researchers analyzed more than 11,000 participants, nearly 3,000 individuals between the ages of 20 and 60 had lymphoma, a type of blood cancer. The study found that the risk of developing lymphoma was 21% higher among those that who were tattooed. The risk was also highest among those who had their first tattoo less than two years prior. Researchers say they will now examine whether there is a link between tattoos and other forms of cancer and inflammatory diseases. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. The U.S. says it's suspending use of a maritime corridor it's been using to get aid to civilians in southern Gaza. The U.S. says it's suspending use of a maritime corridor it's been using to get aid to civilians in southern Gaza. The Pentagon says its $320 million floating pier there sustained damage yesterday and over the weekend. Officials say the repairs could take more than a week, and that's on top of the time needed to re-anchor the structure on the coast. For now, U.S. aid says thousands and thousands of tons of supplies are waiting on a nearby island of Cyprus. Officials say airdrops continue where possible, but land crossings are often closed or bottlenecked. Cleanup efforts are underway across the state as destructive storms move through the area Tuesday. In Garland, neighborhoods are filled with debris from downed trees. Some crashed on top of people's homes. The powerful winds also brought down power lines, leaving thousands in the dark. Residents are now dealing with the aftermath and picking up the pieces where they can. Garland Power and Light Crew say they are working to restore power outages. 
A U.S. military aircraft crashed in New Mexico Tuesday afternoon. Aerials of the scene show the fiery wreckage on a desert hillside near Albuquerque Sunport International Airport. Officials say the F-35B crashed after a refueling stop at Kirtland Air Force Base. The pilot ejected safely, but first responders took him to the hospital and they sustained serious injuries. Flight operations at Sunport Airport have since resumed. Thousands gathered in New York City streets and parks to witness Manhattan Henge on Tuesday. It typically happens twice a year at the end of May and again in mid-July. The spectacle occurs when the setting sun aligns with the Manhattan street grid and sinks below the horizon framed in a canyon of skyscrapers. The event is a favorite of photographers and often brings people out onto sidewalks in sp on the spring and summer evenings to watch the unique sunset. The first Manhattan Henge of the year happened yesterday. It will occur again July 12th and the 13th. The city of Victoria will not need to switch to chlorine for water treatment as it normally does at this time of year. The city says it is currently able to maintain water quality without switching to chlorine. This is due to newer water lines and increased efficiency in the city's disinfection process as well as external factors such as the weather. The Amarillo City Council on Tuesday declined to immediately approve a voter-approved petition that demands that the Texas Panhandle City adopt a so-called abortion travel ban. Read this story by the Texas Tribune on our website, crossroadstoday.com. And we want to invite y'all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. And we do have some extra time to take a look at our fiery forecast with First Warren Storm Team Meteorologist Parker Cox. Parker, is it fiery out there? Uh, it's not fiery ah. yet, but it is, <laughs> I can promise you it will be fiery soon because summer is right around the corner. In fact, if, you may, if you're waking up this morning, you might want to go step outside. You're looking live here in Port Lavaca and you may have noticed it's a little bit cooler out there this morning. Port Lavaca, you're no longer in the 80s this morning. And I don't know why it says sunny. Definitely not sunny as the sun's coming up. Plenty cloudy. You can see right there. Very cloudy, but 76 degrees out there after the rain cooled air swept through the area yesterday, but still a little bit humid, sitting at a 73 dew point with the humidity at 90%. But right now, that is enough for it's not enough for fog, it is enough for some cloud cover over us. You just saw it right there on the camera and look at all of it coming out of the west. But you can see behind it, there is a little bit of a clearing, and I think that will come our way by this afternoon. In fact, I think the clouds will decrease to partly cloudy skies this afternoon. And here in Victoria, probably getting up to about 92 this afternoon with maybe, maybe an ice wooded somewhere here in the crossroads. Maybe an ice wooded spotty thunder shower or two somewhere in the crossroads. I can't guarantee that. But here in Cuero, maybe a little bit warmer because you're out west around 94 today. And in Port Lavaca, a little bit cooler, right around 89 for today. But we've got pretty consistent temperatures for the rest of this week and this weekend. And a couple more chances of rain on the way. I'm excited for this rain, actually. I am too. I kind of we didn't get any rain yesterday. I kind of wanted it. As long as it's not too windy. <laughs> yeah, that too. Well, we got lots of breezy days you see right there. All right. Well, thank you, Parker, and thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful start to your Wednesday. And remember, follow us on our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today, and join Karina, Don, Mac, and Zach today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10.